Four months ago, I tried to restore the motherboards of a Soundbrush 55, a fascinating little device that plays MIDI tracks from floppy disks. It's the companion to the Sound Canvas 55 and I'm sure many of you know it. The boards arrived in rough shape, however. Corroded, with broken traces and no way for me to test if my repairs worked. But that's due to me, because I asked Richard, the owner of the Soundbrush, to only send me the boards. Alongside the boards, Richard included the Yamaha Tone Generator, which I tinkered with. Let's be honest, this device shines in the hands of someone who knows what they are doing. Now the repaired boards are back and reunited with the rest of the sound brush. The big question is, did my restoration efforts pay off? Let's find out straight from Richard himself. So here it is reassembled and I'm pleased to say that your extensive work has uh, worked an absolute treat. And uh, as we can see here, if I use the remote control, it powers right on. Um, so. Let's get it set up with a few different synthesizers and uh, see what it can do. So here's a little call back to uh, the original repair video, which I'm uh, sure people will know what the song is. I'm very sorry, but we have to cut this short because this part was flagged by YouTube as copyrighted material. This is not the first time that this happens, so what I can do is I will upload this section on my Patreon account available for everyone. You can just head over there and listen to one minute of the theme song of Pirates of the Caribbean. And while you're already there, maybe you want to sign up for the free tier. But of course, if you want to support my work, you can also pick one of the paid tiers. I will be very thankful. And now let's continue to hear from Richard what else he has prepared for us. One of the reasons that the Soundbrush is so sought after is because it's the companion product to the SC55. And to that end, both products actually came with a remote control, which has controls for both of the units. So if I hit power on this, it will power on both of the units at the same time. Uh, with this, you're offered control over both devices, uh, with the section here obviously at the bottom offering playback controls, and the buttons at the top responding to uh, the SC55. Here's a demonstration song that came with the Soundbrush, called Star Games, and it makes use of uh, system-exclusive data on the disc to uh, send graphics to the uh, display on the SC55. Last but not least, here's a demonstration of XG Audio. XG was a type of uh, MIDI, so there was General MIDI, General Standard, which is what Roland had, and XG, which was Yamaha's answer. As you can hear, it has a lot of extra features.
Wow, that feels like Richard did most of the work today. So thank you so much, Richard, for giving us this overview of the Soundbrush 55 and also providing these amazing samples of how this device plays back MIDI music. I had so much fun listening to what this device can produce. Of course, it's the synthesizers, but still, the Soundbrush 55 is a part of this entire system. Now, I want to finish this video with an update on my current projects that I'm working on. And that is why I'm very happy that I got the update about the Soundbrush 55, because it buys me time, time to work on my prototypes. So here is revision 1.2 of the Maestro. I think this is the final one. So let's have a look how the boards look like. They just arrived yesterday. They're again green. They're very basic because it takes only 24 hours for them to be manufactured. You see, I have a cutout here. I'm trying to look for every little height difference to be able to make this a one slot expansion. This is the first time I'm trying this. Uh oh, come on. I measured, I measured, I measured. <laughs> That's a tight fit. Oh my goodness, it fits. <laughs> All right, we got the thickness of the PCB. And I also did some things here. I rearranged some parts. I added a switch here that you can switch between a soldered screen and an external screen. This is important because if the screen only has one specific I squared C address, you cannot run both at the same time. It's just a limitation of the protocol. You could use an extra chip that takes care of addressing, but yeah, this is something very simple. And I think the switch here will do the trick as well. I have to test this. That is why, uh, yeah, here is a new revision of the MIDI Forge Maestro. But I was working in the last two to three weeks on something else. And this is the first time I'm revealing it here on my channel. It's, I don't want to reveal too much, but this is a project I'm very proud of. This is another MIDI Forge PCB. It's the Symphony. And if you have a Sound Blaster or 64, you may already know what this is. This is the proprietary expansion board for the Sound Blaster or 64. There were other sound blasters that had the sockets for 30 pin SIM modules, but with all 64, you had these connectors and you needed a proprietary memory module. It wasn't very popular because it was expensive and that is why you will not find it that easily. However, this one here is a replica of the original sound blaster all 64 memory expansion. So let's unpack this as well. And here are the boards. Uh, they look so beautiful. Of course, each of these projects will get its dedicated video. So this is just a small teaser. If I turn it around, well, you will not see much, but well, this is the QR code that I mentioned in a previous video. Um, these boards will be available to everyone on PCBWay's shared project space. So if you want to build your own, after I verify that this works, you can build it yourself. However, if you can't, you will be able to purchase these fully assembled 28 megabytes of goodness for the AW64. More details will come in the very near future. And here you see that this is already revision 1.1. So yeah, I have been working on this for quite a while now. Okay, but this is not all. There is a third project. We had the Maestro, we had the Symphony, and here is the Rhapsody Edition. This is essentially the same thing, but with different memory chips. As you can see here, the memory chips are quite big. These ones are not as easily available, at least what I can tell. And... I decided to try and build something else. This I haven't tested at all yet. The Symphony I have tested. I'm very confident that this one is going to work. 
This one, I have no idea. It's revision 1.0. So yeah, it has a switch here because uh, difficulties. I may not need it, I don't know, but that is something I have to figure out now. That's why I'm so happy I have the video ready now for this week. I can build the first prototype and see if it works. So of course, let's have a look at these PCBs as well. I believe I want to make all of them black with yellow solder mask have the Sound Blaster R64 logo exposed and have everything gold plated, like the ENIG version of it. Uh, it just will make this look very premium. Uh, black color, matte. So this is something that I've seen on PCBWay's uh, website that you can have matte solder masks. So this is really something I, I think I want to try out. It depends what the demand is, to be honest. So, yeah, whatever you think, please let me know in the comments. Let me know about the Soundbrush 55. I'm absolutely happy that this works and I could help Richard to make this device work again. But I'm also excited about this one. And these will be the first products, more or less, that I'm going to launch. Of course, also this board will be open source after it works. If you scan this QR code with your phone, you will be redirected to a PDF document that is basically some sort of a digital certificate that you have one of these boards. But this is more or less for people who buy this not through me. The people who buy it through me, no need to buy this uh, certificate. This is only if these boards, these PCBs end up on classified websites that are not affiliated with me in any way. And if you still feel that you want to contribute and want to support the original author of this PCB, then you can just do that. It's just a five US dollar contribution and uh, that's it. Now it's time for testing. I really hope that this one works. Yeah, let me know if you would be interested in one of these. Do you have an R64? Will you be interested in one of these memory boards? I think I will be able to offer these ones for around 150 US dollars shipped worldwide. So yeah, this includes the memory chips. This includes the time I need to spend on assembling these boards by hand. Of course, I will not solder all of these memory chips by hand. I use solder paste and a heating pad, but yeah, it's still two, three hours of work and uh, then testing and then packaging and sending it to wherever you live. So yeah. Would be good if you let me know how many people are interested, what's the demand, then I know if this is going to flop or if this is going to be a really cool project. Yeah, and this is all I have for you today in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're very happy that the Soundbrush 55 is back alive and works perfectly. I mean, I couldn't believe to listen to some of the output, especially the last track that Richard played sounded really cool. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. I want to thank also all my patrons who are already supporting me and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my future videos. Take care and bye bye.